um, move that over just a little. I have, um, the most interesting troll has found me today. This idiot managed to mention to me that I post in many comment lines, usually Alex Jones. Now, here's what's funny about that is perfect. Um, well, how is it that most of you don't realize that, as surprising as it may be, I don't have millions of dollars to do this show, okay? I don't. Nope. Alex Jones said a long time ago that if we made videos and came out here and fought the evil that we all see around us. And we see it in Hillary Clinton. We see it in the NWO. We see it in uh, TPP. We see it everywhere. That if we stood up for this, that he would always be there to support us. Well, guess what? I took him up on the offer. And I use comment lines to promote this show. Because if I didn't, seven hours of research... Three-point lighting, the computer, the high def, the TV, all the wires and crap that it takes to run it, all of that would just be like this random thing that I'm doing for two people. Friends, the correct views is named this for a reason. I pretty much believe that what I bring to you is true. Now that which is opinion, you can weed your way through. But I, I give facts to what I say. And... Forgive me for being the egoist, but I am not doing all of this work so that I can tell nobody about it. So do me a favor, would you? Hit share and hit subscribe. If you don't like me, then great. Make better videos. Steal my ideas and make them better. I don't care. What I do care about is that we get this out there. That this stops happening. Very stupid comments. Why is your why are you looking in two directions? Because I'm talking into two cameras. People are stupid. Okay, they ask me ridiculous questions all day long, and I'm not gonna harp on it forever because I've got a lot of really important news to get to. But I wanted to address it. Of course, I use comment lines, I use people sharing, I use people hitting subscribe, I I the Tinder I no, I'm um, any, any place I can find, pretty much. Uh, I had a Twitter account I was going to say, but I don't have it anymore. Um, friends. I'm a guy who started a show. Because what I'm talking about matters. It's costing you money. It's costing you freedoms and liberty. It is costing you to not know what I'm talking about. Because I'm sourcing it. I didn't make it up out of nowhere. I write fiction all the time. I do it in my band passing time quite frequently. This is fact here. Okay? Do you get it? I'm a guy who started a show and I'm asking you to share the damn show to let other people know what's going on. What are those things? How about this? We're going to get into our Trump date, as I call it, the Trump update. Chris Menahan. Uh, writes for Information Liberation, London's Muslim mayor tells ignorant Trump Muslims will start killing people if he doesn't let them into the U.S. Now, let me paraphrase here what that means. What it means is, we are the religion of peace, and if you do not allow us to force our way into your country, we'll be the religion of war, and we will magically become terrorists. But we wouldn't have if you would have just let us into your country. Now, I'm not blind to the fact that Russia has bombed Syria to such a degree that while they did prove a point to the U.S., they created a massive refugee crisis. Okay, that is fact. I'm sorry for you Putin worshippers, but it is. It says here, um, Muslims are peaceful and nonviolent, but if you don't let them into your country, they'll start killing people. So says the new Muslim mayor of London, Sadiq Khan. Uh, behind me, you can see the link in HDF. Those of you on regular, I have it on screen share. If you're wondering, uh, subscribe to Media Speaks Low Def. Subscribe to uh, Correct Views. 
IHDEF. The Emir waited only five days before attacking U.S. presidential candidate Donald Trump on his proposed temporary Muslim ban. Donald Trump's ignorant view of Islam could make both of our countries less safe, Khan said. It risks alienating mainstream Muslims around the world and plays into the hands of extremists. Wow, we've never heard that before. Muslims are perfectly reasonable people and not terrorists. But if you don't let them into your country, then they might get angry and become terrorists. We let the terror we can't let the terrorists win. Now I know a lot of that is tongue in cheek, but stay with me here, would you friends? Hear me out. How do we in the West inherit the obligation of accept accepting people into our country that don't like our culture. For instance, I don't like the Westboro Baptist Church very much. You know what? I don't go to their website. I don't go to their church. I don't participate in it. And I would probably not acclimate very well there, because while I am a Christian, they are, in my opinion, terrible. Um, I told you you'd get some opinion. I'm pretty sure that's fact, but we'll go with opinion. Um, I don't go there. Muslims are wanting to come to a country that they do not pan, plan to acclimate to. Now, let me use an analogy. Many of you know that I do the uh, anti-nuke massive Fukushima updates, and I do them frequently. Okay, that's fine. Then listen. What if where I live in Ohio, and it could happen with the Perry nuclear plant, unfortunately, what if it became uninhabitable? are very unwise to live where I had to live. And let's say, hypothetically, I had to move to Mexico. Now, I understand Ohio is nowhere near Mexico, but we're going with an analogy here, okay? Um, no, I'm not going to become Catholic, but you know what? I'm going to try to learn the Spanish language. Long-time viewers know that's not going to go very well. I have no aptitude for foreign languages whatsoever. But I, I will try. You will know that when I go into your store that I don't expect you to know English. I will not become Catholic. I don't believe in the Catholic religion. However, I will not be going around openly assaulting the Catholic religion while in a predominant Catholic country. And that's fine. But we're talking about people that do not wish to acclimate to us at all. This is not an assimilation, it's a more of a takeover. And if you can't see that, then I'm not really sure why, but we're going to go on. Um, Donald Trump's ignorant view, according uh, to the article in The Independent, it could make both Britain and the U.S. less safe. New London Mayor Shadiq Khan has warned. Mr. Khan, who is the city's first Muslim mayor, lucky them, has brushed aside the U.S. presidential hopeful suggestion that he would exempt him from a proposed ban on entering the United States. What, what Donald Trump did was actually say that he congratulated the man and was open about saying, you are a normal man like me. You're a, a normal Muslim. We are trying to ban people who we do not know are normal Muslims and may in fact be terrorists. Instead of taking the congratulation and praise that Donald Trump gave him, instead of acknowledging that Donald Trump said that he hopes he's a very good mayor because this is the kind of thing that could ease attentions among the West and the Muslim religion. No, 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 no. This idiot decides to not thank Trump, but goes on an idiot rant. He said, this isn't about me, it's about my friends and my family and everyone who comes from a background similar to mine. Unfortunately, Mr. Khan, as in Wrath of Khan, it might be worthy to note that many of the people that come from your background have been shooting people in Paris, okay? We are not talking about you any more than you're talking about me when you're referring to the Westboro Baptist Church. See how things tie together on this show? You thought I was out of hand. Um, they tie together, friends. Mr. Khan, 
you are not a radical terrorist. I am not a Westboro Baptist Christian. They are trying to keep the violent Muslims out. Why is that rocket science to you? He said Donald Trump's ignorant view of Islam could make both our countries less safe. It risks alienating mainstream Muslims around the world and plays into the hands of extremists. It says Donald Trump and those around him think that the Western liberal values are incompatible with mainstream Islam. But London has proved that wrong. I may, I should have thought about giving the dumdy of the day here because I hate to be the one to break it to him, but London has in no way, shape, manner, or form proved this wrong at all. Um, it says, well, don't you idiots want ISIS, don't you know ISIS wants you to protect yourselves? Uh, Trump is actually being proven right here, it says, and I agree. Um, this is from RT. Mosques across the UK ordered Muslim women to stop wearing trousers, leaving the house without permission from their husbands, and using Facebook in new controversial rules published by various Muslim organizations and associations. Now, does that sound to you like a religion that London has shown is compatible with the West? Bitch, don't leave your house. That's what it says. I'm sorry, I'm paraphrasing for those of you, you know, as Rush Limbaugh says in Rio Linda. The documents caused anger among anti-extremism campaigners and moderate Muslims who called the rules outdated and totally wrong interpretations of Islam according to a report in the Times. It says the Green Lane Masjid in Birmingham banned women from wearing trousers. Yeah, that's compatible with the West. Even in front of their husbands as they show details of the body. They have called Facebook a road to sin. And uh, the Blackburn Muslims Association, it says, which is an affiliate of the Muslim Council of Britain, which is MCB, an umbrella body representing 50, five, excuse me, 500 mosques, even went so far as to say that Muslim women should not leave the house without their husband's permission and should be accompanied by a male chaperone known as the Maham. And they said that modeling is an immoral act. Now, let me show you this poor kid here. He's sitting here. I, I thought they were... You ever see those parking pillars that are somewhat penis-shaped? No, we're not politically correct here. We, th we say things like that. Um, it looks... It's like a dick is what it looks like. Um, it, it's a, it's, they're, they're half round, and they got the little dip, and then it goes down. And they're made so that you can't run your car through the front door of a, say, Target or something like it. All right, um, look at the women in the hijab here. They look a lot like blue versions, like a Smurf version of that parking stopper. Does it not? Those of you on HDF can see it behind me. That is exactly what they look like. That's mind-blowingly hilarious to me. Maybe I'm just easily amused. Peter Maxwell College Fix After Trump Jocking University Forces Students to Take Minority Culture Class to Graduate. Now let me give you a little bit of a backstory here. I have a degree in IMT, specifically web design, graphics, and video music production. Um, they would force, well they still do, they force students such as me to take trigonometry and physics. They do this because they know that there's a really good chance that you're going to have to retake it, and that's how they make their money. It's part of the scam. It has nothing to do with a well-rounded education, my ass. It has to do with stealing money from you, and um, they know that you're going to have to take these classes over and over again. Or that you're going to get a really, you know, uh, you're going to drop it and retake it, for instance, as I did with physics. Um, what this school is doing is even more clever. They are trying to find a way to use the lie of white privilege, of which there is no white privilege, and applying it rather openly 
in another way that makes students take classes that they cannot fit into their schedule for reasons that have absolutely nothing whatsoever to do with their major. Learn about hip-hop, which of course is the music that has killed the West, and leisure services. At a time when some colleges are implementing their first diversity requirement for graduation, the University of Illinois and Urbana in Champaign is doubling its existing requirement. You hear that? Finding new ways to charge students. And you're going to find out as we get into the meat and potatoes of this article that there isn't any way to, to take this class without having to borrow or spend more money to do it within a given college credit time. And those of you that have been through the nightmare of college know what I'm talking about. At a public meeting last week, the Academic Senate voted to require students entering the university in 2018 to take a class, each in non-Western culture, in U.S. minority culture, that is to say, idiotic culture. Currently, students must take one course that satisfies either of these categories. Here's the problem. Hip-hop culture is stupid culture. Yes, I said it, and I'm not backtracking from it. Dumbed-down lyrics for a dumbed-down culture to people that are being purposefully dumbed down for the purpose of the government trampling over them. And white, white, white dudes like me, it's happening to you too. Why do you think music has gotten stupider and stupider? Why is country music with absolutely no depth at all honky-tonk, badonk, donk? Why is that taking over? Why is Nickelback taking over? Why don't you know who Animals as Leaders are? But because they're the most musically adept band probably extant today. But you don't know who they are, and you wouldn't appreciate it probably if you did, because they don't teach music uh, theory in school anymore. Dumbing you down, making you more stupid, making you more idiotic, making you think that Drake actually has talent and that Beyonce can sing. Mind rot! We don't need to learn about Beyonce. Okay, she can go to hell. We need to learn about how to keep our jobs in the country so that these engineering students can actually get a job somewhere other than China. Isn't that a red letter idea? Shazam, Sparky! I swear, I read this stuff and I probably shouldn't because I think about how stupid our country and our world and our nation has become and I could vomit in my own hat. The estimated size of 2018's freshman class is 7,400 students, according to a proposal by the University Committee on Race and Ethnicity. Do you know how much money they're going to make by adding this class, by mandating it to people that don't need it? Members of CORE justified the double requirement by citing police shootings over young black people, largely who earned it, as well as recent events on campus that include pro-Donald Trump chalk messages. Well, there are two major parties in this country, so it's unusual that you would support one. So if you wrote Sanders 2016, it wouldn't be offensive? This is what we're dealing with here. This is a stupidity, okay? I know, I, I usually vote Libertarian. This year I'm probably voting Trump, unless he tries to bring Chris Christie into a VP, then I won't. I'm sorry I'm not voting for a prosecutor to be in the White House. You can go to hell. I will leave Trump if he does that. Otherwise, I'm probably voting for Trump. So, it's one of the two major parties. Most people don't know there's even a third option out there. Do I, do I support Gary Johnson? Yes, with some reservations. Do I support McAfee? The same. Um... The letter said that the, the university must condemn acts like the recent chalking attacks. There are no chalking attacks. We don't want a bastard socialist as our leader because socialism has done wonderful things for Venezuela. If you don't know what I'm talking about, look it up. We also don't want a trollop named Hillary Clinton, the lover of Miss Weiner, in the damn White House because she's half a step from socialism herself. See Venezuela. We don't want any more crap from the mainstream. Does that mean that Trump is perfect? Now, the God has sent us Donald Trump. No, I sound like uh, Glenn Beck. No. 
But he's the best shot right now, friends. He wants our jobs here, okay? He wants our future here. He wants a border, a language, and a culture, as Michael Savage says. And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, I'm telling you, if we end up with if we end up with a mindset that lets the elite program what we're supposed to think think of Donald Trump, friends, we are doomed. I'm going to move on past the Trump date here. Um, this is from the Daily Sheeple, Lily Dane. Cop steals $53,000 from charity via highway robbery, and that is to say civil asset forfeiture. Now, for those of you that don't know what this is, you're going to be alarmed. You're going to think I'm lying. You're going to think it's not really happening, so look up. Uh, look up. Look it up. I mean, it's all I can say. If you are traveling with money of a decent amount, and they can take it simply for the fact that it's a lot of money. Even if you did nothing whatsoever dishonest to earn it, it's happening all over. Now that's interesting. If they ever try that to me, they're going to be in for one hell of a lawsuit, and I'll tell you why. Um, I have multiple videos up explaining that I cannot, will not, and do not bank. I refuse to do so. That means that oftentimes, I have money on me if I am going to certain... Now, don't try to rob me because you're going to end up with pennies. Usually, I have no money on me. But let's say I am... Um, if I am investing in something, say silver or gold, and I was to sell it, I would not put that money in a bank. I'd probably bury it somewhere. I don't trust banks. I will not bank. I don't bank. So if they catch me from point A to point B, after cashing the gold, then I am somehow a criminal? Another way. I'm in a ban. Believe it or not, sometimes we get paid. Not usually, but sometimes. Um, when we get paid and we're driving home, I'm, I'm banned later. We're probably going to get paid a lot now that we're signed to KSR Records. Love you, Link. So Link, Link takes our money. And he's driving to the hotel, and he's got the money for all five members of the band. He's got the money for himself and his wife. He's got the money for the people that are driving us. He's got the money for the people that are setting up our sound. He's got all this money on him. If they pull him over, they can steal it because it's a large sum of money. Is that what you're saying, Sam? Yes. Okay? That's why I'm talking into a camera. That's why I'm going to be spamming this, as they say on comment lines. Highway robbery, oops, I mean civil asset forfeiture, is still alive and kicking in the United States despite louder calls for reform and more prominent negative publicity surrounding the program. Civil asset forfeiture is one of the most corrupt and vile programs that law enforcement agencies practice in America these days. It is a process in which road pirates, known as cops, can seize your cash and property without convicting you with or even charging you for a crime. Police departments and the Department of Injustice love the program because it means lots of free stuff. They are trying to get you to put your money into banks so that they can then uh, do what's called a haircut and take the money from you when the economy collapses. It's already happened in Cyprus and Greece, so don't tell me it can't happen. In 2014, Law enforcement officials stole more from Americans than criminals did. They robbed people of 4.5 billion with a B. More than burglars snagged from us. In other words, cops have stolen more from you and I as a whole than the criminals have that they claim to want to stop. Okay? The numbers are here. The, you can see the link. It's right there. Right For those of you on... Right there. Hi, At a press conference, several asset forfeiture fighting Institute for Justice announced that they have a new client. Today, a group of Karen Christians from Burma and Thailand partnered with the Institute for Justice to challenge the civil forfeiture of more than $53,000 by the Muskogee, Oklahoma Sheriff's Department, who tried to steal the money from a charity. 
The seized assets included cash donations made to a Thai orphanage and funds being raised for a profit Christian school in Burma by the Klo and Ku music team, a Burmese Christian rock band, and a five-month U.S. world tour. Now, you have to understand that if this was the Islamic band, or if this was the Hindu band, or if this was the uh, atheist marching band, they probably wouldn't have to go through this at all. But because they're Christian, it's, it's cool to do anything to them. We've established that many times. It says the ordeal began, I'm dying of thirst, I'm sure you can hear it in my voice, began on February 27th, 2016 at 6.30 p.m., when Iwa, who is a volunteer American tour manager, volunteer American tour manager for the band, was pulled over in Muskegee, Oklahoma for having a broken light. Oh, Christella saved me. Iwa's encounter started as a routine traffic stop and quickly escalated into a nightmare, as all civil assets forfeiture cases do. Forgive me, I'm dying of thirst. I had to. He managed the band's finances. He held on to the cash proceeds that it raised from ticket and merchandise sales at concert. By the time that Ewa, who did nothing wrong whatsoever, was stopped in Oklahoma, the band had held concerts in 19 cities across the United States, raising money via tickets sold for $10 to $20 each, reports the Washington Post, for those of you that think that I don't get sources. During the stop, the sheriff's deputy searched Ewa's car and found $53,000 in cash which was composed primarily of funds raised for charity during the tour, but which also included money from CD and souvenir sales, donations to a Thai orphanage, and personal belonging to e and the band members. In other words, the cops stole the charity money and all of the money that the band has to exist while they're on tour. This is your law enforcement and your tax dollars hard at work. Drug sniffing dogs are prone to giving false positives. And there was no evidence of drugs or drug paraphernalia of any kind. But some of the armed thug known as cops brought in a dog sniffing dog which alerted them to the car. But the uh, Road pirates use all kinds of stuff to steal money from people. You also have to remember that you listening to this, you, you listening to this will set off a guard dog, or a drug dog, I should say, excuse me, if you have money on you because um, I think it's like 10%, 5% um, of the money in the United States, maybe higher than that, has been used as a... Cocaine uh, sniffing device. Um, I don't know what it's called. That shit. I, I have many sins. Coke isn't one of them. Um, these are ways they train the dogs so that when they smell something that isn't theirs, then you'll get into the car. The cops will get into the car. You'll get busted for what you never used and you'll get your money stolen, okay? Um, this is from LJ's press release. Ewa is totally innocent. Muskegee County has no evidence that the cash is associated with drug activity. I would say they have evidence to the contrary, considering that they can prove where they were, how they played, and what they were doing with the money they raised prior to when they were pulled over by the thugs. Other than the supposed alert from a drug dog in a car where no drugs were found, the other evidence, it's a Christian band! The other evidence cited in the deputy's affidavit is all completely innocuous. The presence of the cash in the Ewa's car was supposed inconsistent stories, which were likely due to the fact that Ewa didn't speak English very well, and the fact that Ewa wasn't able to confirm that the money was his, which wasn't because it was also the, uh, his personal money and the band's money. In other words, what they did is they went into his car and said that, I, is this money yours? And he says, no, in broken English, however they would say it, not entirely. And they would say, oh, okay, well, our drug-sniffing dog went crazy. Well, if you've got $53,000 in the car, there's probably a lot of, lot of money in there, statistically speaking, that has gone up someone's nose. Isn't that a pleasant thought? Please wash your hands before eating. Um, there's also the fact that he was telling the truth. 
It was not his money. It was the man's money and his money. When Link gets paid for sending passing time on the road, not all that money is going to be his. So is he supposed to lie? If he doesn't lie, he's going to have to give the money to the cops. And that's the kind of nightmares we're looking at, friends. And that's why I'm doing shows like this. I want you to hit share. I want you to hit subscribe. I want you to let other people know that I'm out here telling the truth. I'm also out here telling you about idiots. This has to be the most disturbing story ever. What kind of idiot would allow what I'm about to tell you about to occur? You would have to have a level of not only stupidity, but insensitivity such as never been reached before. Express.co.uk Rescue dog dies from exhaustion after saving seven people from earthquake rubble. Well, it might have been a good idea after person number six to give the dog some water and some food. It may have been a good idea to call in future rescue other rescue dogs. Maybe if someone died because the dog didn't make one more trip, that would have been okay. Because the dog, once nourished, probably could have saved another six. This is animal abuse, okay? And I'm not some PETA fan. I eat meat like a freaking zombie, okay? That's not what I'm saying. But there is a line that you don't cross. You do not work an animal into exhaustion and death. This is insane. A Deco, a four-year-old white Labrador, was hailed as a hero. A hero because his owners were hailed as idiots. For finding numerous people who lay trapped in the carnage of collapsed buildings, and the coast of the Latin American country was hit by an earthquake 7.8 on the Richter scale on April 16th. Good reason not to build a new plant which they don't in the South, because that's where the elite go. Around 650 people died in the disaster, with thousands more injured. Daco was one of a number of dogs drafted into the worst hit areas, the Pedernals, to search for anyone trapped under mounds of rubble. The hero dog, which they didn't have enough sense to feed water or give a break to, was part of the Ibera Fire Service, which should be shut down, as well as successfully locating the survivors, he also pinpointed two cadavers trapped within the debris. It says the fire service tragically announced the brave mutt himself, the rescue dog, has since died. It is thought the combination of the searing heat, long working hours, and lack of water led to the giant canine's death. These people should have their asses kicked for this. This is not, I repeat, is not what we have rescue dogs for. Yes, rescue dogs are meant to die so that people don't. I understand that. And actually, as bad as it sounds, Peter, you can go to hell. I don't have a problem with it. However, there comes a time when even if I'm the one laying in the rubble, if you can let me die and this dog has saved six people, and if you give him some food and some water and let him cool down, he can save another six, another four. And then, okay, let me die in there, okay? What is wrong here? This is, in, this is animal abuse. And I would venture to say it led to more death than if they had just done it my way. Sickening. Friends, I got three more stories to get to. I do want to say very quickly... And then if you're, on, you're going to be on screen share here, you can look behind me. You're going to get a really good look at Sticker Junkie's website. And the reason you want to take a good look at that website, right there, is because they make amazing stickers. And you're going to want stickers for something. A, a, a family gathering. A, a, we just saw Team Bride. Shout out to Team Bride. <laughs> at Cedar Point. They have no idea what I'm talking about. There were these people that had, had tattoos on and I, it said Breeze last ride before she's a bride. My wife and I laughed at it through the entire four hour wait of the, uh, the Val Raven. My point is, you really need stickers for some event like that. 
And you're going to want to get those stickers at Sticker Junkie. However, you're going to want to remember to do one more thing. When on checkout, make sure you uh, mention correct views, type in the correct views. You're going to go ahead and get a more of a discount just because you're a listener of the show. It means you're one of the thinking people and not a zombie. Friends, this is from New American. Only 37% of high school seniors are ready for college. Now, there are, what I see, three reasons for this. The first reason I have already eloquently given you, and that is the, um, the issue of taking classes. They are a music major, so they decide you should take Romanian theology, for instance. They love to give you classes that you, they know you're going to fail. That way they can say you're not ready, and they can give you remedial classes and charge you even more. The second reason is because of Common Core, which has become the absolute worst idea in education probably in American history. And the third reason is really bad teachers. At least that was the case when I was in school and it seems to be the case now. You have major colleges saying that you can leave the class if you are a law student say you're going to be a lawyer, you can leave the class that is talking about your major if maybe they're talking about murder and it triggers you. What the hell is that? Why the hell are you a lawyer? We have a really stupid society. We don't teach music theory anymore. That way someone thinks the weekend has talent. We don't teach history anymore. Therefore, people think that Donald Trump is a bad idea. We don't teach what people need to know. And this, this isn't you. This isn't me condemning the youth. This was true when I was growing up. If I hadn't read things separate from when I was in school, I'd be the typical dumbass Gen Xer. A Gen Xer, I hate my generation. Um, my generation's the biggest letdown ever. Um, the latest edition of the National Assessment of Educational Process, it's called NEAP, the Progress, is the nation's report card released on April 27th and it indicated that only 37% of American high school seniors are academically prepared for college level math and reading. How could you be ready for college level reading when you have idiots like we have as role models? Um, there was some, there was some f favor here when um, people were listening to say Metallica because while the message might not be great, you had to have some kind of knowledge to understand what the shortest straw was talking about, or to understand what Injustice for All was talking about. Um, take a band like Exodus. You had to understand a little bit about English to understand what impact is eminent meant. Um, look at the 90s, a song like Cumbersome. Cumbersome has really, really cumbersome lyrics. You need to have some kind of a brain in your head to understand what they're talking about. That is not the case with Drake, The Weeknd, Beyonce, Rihanna, Nickelback, Lady Gaga, Kesha, you get the point. That's leading to this. The dumbing down of people that our leaders have done for the sole purpose of getting themselves elected is turning around to bite them in the ass because it's making them too stupid to even know what they're doing. The NEEP report recorded a drop in reading scores from 288 in 2013 to 287 in 2015, and it's down 5 points since 1992, and the mathematics score fell 152 points from last year from 153 in 2013. I can tell you why this is. It's the reason that I'm talking into the camera right now. It's because we are a stupid nation learning the wrong things because those things are based on an agenda. Those things are based on whether or not you will support one man putting his penis in another man's body orifice or not. It has to do with whether or not you're going to accept things that you may or may not accept. Personally, do I care about what gay people do? No. Have a blast. Have the orifice ball of the year. I don't care. But don't ask the rest of the world to accept it. But no, that's what we're teaching our kids. Um, I'm a Christian. Do you have to be? No. I don't really care if you're not. But we are teaching. You need to be accepting of religions. You 
need to not teach religion in school. Maybe you need to teach math. Maybe you need to teach science and English and things that might actually happen so that we don't end up with future generations that have this misconceived notion that uh, Nicki Minaj is a poet. God alive. An article about the findings, it's in the Wall Street Journal, cited by Bill Bershaw, the executive director for the National Assessment Governing Board, which oversees the test. Bershaw said that although the board was pleased that the high school graduation rates were rising, they were disappointed by the lack of progress. That's because the only reason more people are graduating is because they're allowing people to graduate when they're dumber. This is not a win. And friends, this is a problem. This is a really, really big problem. Um, I'm reading, well, slowly, because I never have time to read now that I do this show, but a book called The Fawn, and I, um, most people listening to this wouldn't even be able to read the damn book. Well, most people listening to this would. I take that back. Most people, the people listening to this know, wouldn't be able to read The Fawn. They'd be utterly lost. And this is going on and on and on. And our people are getting dumber and more stupid and more ignorant all the time. i got two more stories, friends. I know I'm taking drinks while I'm talking. Rush Limbaugh gets breaks. They're called commercials. I have none. End of the American Dream, Michael Snyder. Cell phone addiction. 15 numbers that show the ridiculous obsession Americans have with their cell phones. There have been studies that have proved beyond a shadow of doubt that our cell phones are making us unable to pay attention to anything at all. Um, I use my cell phone at work because where I work it's very hard to talk because I'm a DJ. So I, I get, they have to text me. And I'm also friends with a, uh, one of my dearest friends in California. Her name's Giselle. We text. Obviously, we don't get to see each other. But this constant ticking on your damn phone during movies, get-togethers, the band singer, Serenity, she's so addicted to her phone that I asked the band once, do you have any memories of Serenity? In the band at practice, when she's not singing, and we're all just chilling, do you have any memories of her that do not involve her holding her phone in her hand and ticking, and maybe answering the question if you ask her and she happens to hear it between ticks? Do you know nobody in the band or management had one memory that they could think of? That is what our cell phones are doing to us. And I love Serenity greatly, but she's one of the people that have this issue. You can't make it through a whole damn episode of a... TV show without this need to test, text your phone and check your phone and people carry it around in their pockets so they can give themselves ball cancer. They carry it around in their bra because they want to see if they can get breast cancer. And we've, we've covered this before and yet it doesn't get any better. It only gets worse. Or maybe if somebody else again speaks to you about this, then maybe some people out there were listening. Friends, it is ruining us. The average smartphone user checks his phone 35 times a day. Common Sense Media just released a new survey that found that 50% of American teens admit that they feel addicted to their smartphones. 70% of parents say their teens and them have argued about their phone usage. Well, that's because sometimes parents are overbearing. We can forgive that one. Uh, four, 77% of parents say their teenagers were sometimes distracted by their phone or tablets during family time, and yet they're not. And yet the family is falling apart at an ever faster rate. Um, even though it's illegal in almost every state, 56% of parents confess that they check their mobile phones while driving. That's not going to hurt anything. That's all media hype. My ass. Uh, I don't care about that. 51% of teens admit that they have seen their parents check their phone. Who cares? A different survey found that 75% of all smartphone users admit they texted while driving. It's usually at a stoplight. You're not going to hurt anybody. Who cares? 70% of smartphone users check their phones within an hour of getting up. Well, that's just common sense. See, I'm not just going to side with these idiots, but 61% um, of smartphone users admit that they regularly sleep with their cell phone or smartphone turned on under their pillow. Friends, that's a disaster. That will give you cancer of the bone in your jaw or brain cancer. That is a death sentence. We have covered this before. Look up correct view cell phones. 
56% of smartphone users check their phones within an hour of going to sleep. To hell with that, I shut mine off. Um, and it's downstairs. 48% of smartphone users check their devices over the weekend. Of course, that's, of course you would. You don't want to lose track of your daughter over the weekend. 51% of smartphone users check their driver devices continuously on their vacations. Uh, not if you vacation like uh, Christelle and I did. We went out of the country and had no cell phone service. 44% of smartphone users admit that they would experience a great deal of anxiety if they weren't missing or unable to work for a week. I'll say this on air. I will pay the entire month's rent if Christelle would go without her phone for one week. She'd never do it. She would die. If you made me that offer, I would hand you my cell phone now. That is cell phone addiction right there, friends. Um, one survey discovered the average cell phone user is on the device for three hours and eight minutes a day. That's got to be great. Make sure you're using speakerphone and you're going to get cancer. Fifteen. A different survey found that the average cell phone user spends 3.6 hours a day using it. Uh, blah, blah, blah. There's two different statistics. But the point is that this ongoing cell phone ad addiction that we have is dumbing us down. It's making us stupid. And we can't even watch a simple television program without checking the damn thing. And it's a problem, friends. And that brings us to the dumb day of the day. All right, you are an idiot. Who is today's idiot? The dumb day, if you will. Guys. Is there any surprise? It is crying Ted Cruz. Christelle actually named him after he lost uh, Indiana. She goes, does that mean that he is now crying Ted Cruz? That was classic. Kit Daniels, a prison planet. Let me unfade with this. Um, Ted Cruz claimed that the mainstream media wants Donald Trump to be the GOP, despite reality stating otherwise. Yeah, despite the fact that they lie and call him a racist, despite the fact that they lie and say that he's for the one percenters, despite the fact that they lie and say that he wants to start a nuclear war just because he won't say that we won't ever use them if we need to, they have lied and said that he hates women. They have lied and said that he is misogynistic. They have lied and said that he hates the Mexicans. They have lied and said that he hates China. And yet, that is the sign that those lying want him to be president. Uh, Ted Cruz, you get the dumb of the day. You look at the media executives and all the major media companies, they're all partisan Democrats, and Donald Trump winning the Republican nomination is a win-win for the partisan Democrat point of view, because if so, Hillary wins. And she wins in double digits. The point is, Cruz, all of the polls coming out are showing that Trump is leading Hillary. Trump has more trouble defeating Sanders than he does Hillary. You get the dumb deal of the day, Ted Cruz. Besides the fact that the mainstream media has viciously attacked Trump the past year, more so than Cruz, a new poll revealed that Trump is leading Clinton nationally. You can see it there in the link. Trump also does twice as well among Democrats as Clinton does among Republicans. Rasmussen stated this. That's very reputable. It's also worth pointing out that not only does Goldman Sachs back both Clinton and Cruz, but the establishment in general prefers Cruz to Trump because the Texas senator is not a political outsider that he claims to be. Ted Cruz is the ultimate insider, former top Bush 41 policy aide and globalist Ivy Leaguer and establishment insider. Roger Stone mentioned this. It's also, he's a native of Canada, which I don't think should prevent him from running. That's the least of our worries. I'm far more worried by the fact that he's backed by backers and the same people that back Hillary Clinton. Friends, you have been listening to The Correct Views. Do me a favor, hit subscribe. Please donate to the show if you can. The show is brought to you by Change Transportation. Wherever, whether you call Uber or whoever you call, do me a favor and uh, call Change Transportation. They'll price match it and beat it for you. Um, if you want to donate to the show, you want to help me out, the correct views on Hotmail.com. Every penny you give to me goes towards a better show. And guys, I've been talking to you for damn near an hour. A better show is what I want to give to you. 
Thank you for hitting share. Thank you for hitting subscribe. Thank you for uh, supporting. Let's never take it for granted. Good night, friends. God bless. This is what you wanted to see. This is what you created for me. And this is how you wanted to see.